Hi guys, someone asked me if I could build a parametric brick wall after my last tutorial and I thought that could be a bit of fun for a quick and dirty uh, grasshopper video. So let's jump straight into it. We're going to try and keep our inputs to a minimum. So start with our brick length as always is 230. Click hold down alt to make a copy. Double click on the number slider section. Update that and repeat for the height 76. And it helps if you press enter. 78, no, we want 76. We'll call them just so we don't get it. Last link. width and height all right cool so there are our brick inputs we'll go under curve primitive grab a rectangle i'll put in x as our length our width is y and then under surface primitive Box rectangle, use the rectangle we just created, and our height goes into the height of our brick. So there, there we've got our brick. Put that in a group and just call that brick. So we don't get lost. We can unpreview that. Now we'll set the definition of our wall. So again, we're going to do three inputs for the wall. We have one, well, we'll just go 28 for this one. That will give us a good double click again, 22 for the next one, I guess. And for the final one, which will be our depth, any number should do. I'll make it interesting at the very least. So what we've got here, we've got our number of bricks high and we'll next one will be number of bricks wide and the depth and I'll just make a quick note that that's in millimeter so I don't forget all right so we're going to try and keep all those inputs to be our only variables that we can edit now we want to set up a sort of random curve generator just to make it a bit more interesting than a straight wall. So we'll go under vector, construct point. And because we want it to be sort of somewhat random, we will grab a set under sequence, a series component. What we're going to do is we're going to create our Step size will be our brick length, but we know that there's mortar. So we might just add in a quick expression x times, just for the sake of the experiment, 1.5 will give us plenty of wiggle room. And for our count, this will be our width because we're going the brick length, and that can be our x generator now we've got a series of points along the x axis now for the y is where we want our random to come in so we will under set sequence random or we'll grab a random component the number of components needs to match our count of the last We need a range, so we'll create a range to maths domain, construct domain. We're happy with A being zero and B will be our depth. That will act as our range. Neaten that up a little bit. Put that into Y, that should hopefully give us a little bit of a 
randomization. It's looking very tight if you ask me. We'll go under vector, sorry, we'll curve, line, interpolate. Not what I want. One. That's very. That's a very sharp curve. So what we might do is we might just to soften that curve up a little bit. We want to keep our brick count accurate or as accurate as possible for a quick little tutorial. So we're going to go under set sequence and we're going to cull every nth element. So standard set to every second that into that and drag it into that and that gives us a much smoother curve then we see the y stacks up that's because our numbers aren't adding up so if we click hold down alt and drag that down and just replace the list input and there we've got a lovely random somewhat random curve so now we've got our well, that will be our base curve so now we want we could just move that up but what we want to do is we want to make it a bit more random. So what we'll do is we'll copy. I need to copy the X do we? We can copy that. Hold down shift. Grab our random. And click hold down alt and drag it down. Now the only thing we really need is if we change the seed it will create a new randomization. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll set up, I guess, we'll go maths, operators, multiplication, change the seed. We'll use, since we're trying to keep inputs to a minimum, we'll use the depth and the length. And that gives us, generates just a somewhat random seed. And that looks good. So now we just want to move that up. So we'll go under transform, Euclidean move. The geometry will be our second curve. And we are of course moving it in the Z vector. So under vector, vector unit not Y, unit Z. Connect that to our trajectory and number of bricks high that's pretty easy to work out we're going to have now after math operators multiplication height is that and number of bricks high. So everything should fit. Put that down there and put that into our Z vector. And we've got our new line moved up. We can hide that one. Unpreview all of our points for now. I don't think we'll need them. Beautiful, so we've got two curves. And we've got a brick. So now we need to set our bricks on our surface. So firstly, we have to generate the surface. So under surface, freeform loft, which I'm sure a lot of you have used in your first ever Grasshopper tutorial. Drag in our first curve, second curve, hold down shift, put it into the curve input as well. Put a high quality preview for this one. It's looking good. Unpreview all of this. Alright, so we've got a surface. Now the next thing is we need to divide up our surface. So to do that, we'll go intersect tab, mathematical, grab the contour component. Our surface input is the surface we've just created. And what do we need? We need the distance, which is our brick height. Otherwise our bricks will be floating in midair. 
Now, plane is set to 0, 0, 0, which means x, y plane. We don't need to change that. And direction is in the z, which is perfect. So we don't have to touch anything with that, but it's worth noting that they're there if you've got a surface that isn't primarily in the vertical direction like we're working with now. So we can hide our loft. We've got our series of points, our series of curves. Now it's a matter of the making our planes on the curve to put our bricks. So to do that, we are going to go curve, division, horizontal frames, and drag that onto our canvas, take our curves, put it into our horizontal frames. And now we're going to want to grab our bricks wide. We set up at the start, grab that output into our number. Perfect. So now we've got our plane set up on our curves, orientated to our curves from our contour. It's just a matter of orientating our bricks to that. So we'll go where we're we going to go transform Euclidean orient. Our geometry is going to be our brick. Uh, now we've got that old problem of our brick being in the bottom corner. Let's just set this up a little bit better, which I've done in a previous tutorial. So we'll just do this nice and quick. We'll go under surface analysis. Deconstruct B-Rep. I'm going to grab a list item, so under set list, list item. Right click on our input, set integer. The bottom should be 4 as it generally is. Just double check that. Preview these two. And that's correct, that's exactly what we want. We will get the center of that. So surface analysis area gives us the centroid. Do is we'll just highlight them, right click on our group, add to group. That just becomes a part of the brick, unpreview. And we'll use that as our first point in our orient command. That's our brick orientated to the centroid of the bottom its lowest face and we'll take our frames and put that into B and there we go now not enough not enough bricks are showing up which is not a problem because we're going to change the pattern what we'll do here is we'll right click on the N input the count expression editor do x times 2 commit changes now we know we don't want our bricks we've doubled the width between them but we don't want our bricks to be stacked we want them to be like you see bricks where they're in the pattern that they're laid so they're structurally sound if we go under set sequence grab coal the nth again, have our geometry as a list. We unpreview our orientated bricks. Now we've got what have we got here now. It's not enough. Ah, what the issue is, it's treating the data tree. So it's starting every data tree, which we don't want. We want it to run. As a flat so we're going to right click on our geometry output and we're going to flatten and there we've got our beautiful pattern of a brick layer I what we don't want to see and then hopefully if we play with some of these it won't break too much that's looking good Bricks high. 
Lovely. That's exactly what you want to see. Looks wide. Fingers crossed. That is extending them out. Beautiful. Make that a bit shorter. And look from above the depth. So you can create some random patterns because every time we change the depth, you've got to remember it's affecting our second randomization seed. You can do the same for your first random if you want. And if we bring it to zero, it should be a flat brick wall. Well, that was good fun. Hopefully some of you guys learnt some nifty little tricks out of that one. Please, if you like, and if you like my videos, find them helpful. Do like and subscribe and leave a comment. Otherwise, that was just a nice short one in Grasshopper. Cheers, guys.